Good day. Welcome to the Military Tools for ArcGIS Widgets for Developers webinar. I'm Fred Woods, Defense Marketing Specialist at Esri. Your presenters today are Patrick Hill and Kevin Gonzaga. Today you will learn how to use military tools to create widgets and gain access to the source code for the tools to be embedded in your project and modified as necessary. I now turn over the webinar to Patrick and Kevin. Thank you for attending. Thanks, Fred. Hi, everyone. My name is Patrick Hill, and I'm here with Kevin Gonzago to talk about military tools and widget development. We're both developers for the Defense Solutions at Esri. But before we go further, I'd like to talk a little bit more about who Defense Solutions is. Defense Solutions supports the defense, intel, and national security industries with documented, maintained, and open source solutions. These solutions include maps, apps, Python scripts, and custom configurations that empower users to work with focused workflows to fit their needs. So who are the people in our community? Um, our community is made up of the CI and human analysts, intelligence and geospatial analysts, operational decision makers, and planners. These individuals want to use the ArcGIS platform to empower their workflows to support their needs. On the Defense Solution, we work with these users to create products. And one of these products is military tools for ArcGIS. Military Tools is the vehicle that allows our users to have simple, accessible tools that are fully supported, mission-focused, and are essential to our defense and intel users, allowing them to complete their workflows. So what is Military Tools? It's made up of four components. The first component is coordinate conversion that allows users to convert between coordinate notations such as decimal degree, UTM, and MGRS. Next is distance and direction, which allows users to make geodesic measurements and draw geodetic lines, circles, ellipses, and range rings. Third is the visibility analysis. Visibility allows users to perform linear and radial line of sight analyses. Lastly is the military symbol editor for ArcGIS Pro only, which allows users to create and work with military symbology, supporting military symbol standard 2525D and 2525B change too. These components allow us to support several defense workflows that we have identified as most crucial. So I mentioned in the previous slide that Military Symbol Editor is only released for ArcGIS Pro. And this is because it is an authoring there is no authoring experience supported on the web at this time. You may, however, use ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap to publish military symbols to the web. The workflow is supplied by the military overlay template available at the URL displayed. And just a note, all of the URLs displayed in, on the slides today will be provided to you in a post-webinar um, post webinar email. So we also want to get these tools to our users where they need them. That is why we support military tools across the platform. Military Tools is available for ArcMap 10.3 through 10.5, ArcGIS Pro 1.4, and widgets are supported for Web App Builder developer edition 2.3. By deploying across the platform, we empower our users, no matter where they are, with tools to fit their needs. So now I'm going to go and just show you real quick, um, do a real quick uh, rundown of um, the widgets and military tools. So here I have a, a simple web application. First I'm going to show you the coordinate conversion widget. So I pull up the coordinate conversion. And I'll notice that there is an input and several outputs. The input is in decimal degrees, and the outputs are in um, various uh, coordinate conversion notations. So I have decimal degree, GeoRef, MGRS, etc. So as I click around on the map, you'll notice that the input changes and the translated coordinate notations change as well. Additionally, I can fat finger in a coordinate. So I'll just do negative one seven whoops. Whoops, that's assuming. I'm gonna skip over that right now and show you the just it's zooming funny. I'm gonna show you the distance and direction widget next. So uh, distance and direction allows us to draw uh, geodetic lines, circles, ellipses, and range rings. So I'm gonna draw a line real quick. So I simply click on the icon, click on the screen, and draw the line. And you'll notice that the line is curving to show that it's a, a geodetic line. Likewise, I can draw a circle. 
and again, you'll see that it distorts as it moves to the with the geodetic uh, measurements. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit to the Monterey area and show you the visibility widget. Now the visibility widget takes as a few inputs. Um, um, it has the field of view of the um, view shed that you're going to create, and it's uh, controlled with the style here. Um, we can uh, modify the observation height, so that's the observer. So I'm going to set it up to five meters, and then we can also um, uh, modify the range um, in kilometers. So I'm just going to click on my icon, click on the map, and it'll create me a view shed. And there it is. So that was the visibility widget. So if you're a developer, what do you need to get started? If you're working with add-ins, you will need the Arc Objects SDK or the ArcGIS Pro SDK for ArcMap or Pro, respectively. But here we're concerned about widgets. In that case, you will need the ArcGIS Web App Builder for Developers Edition 2.2 with the JavaScript API 3.2. So where do we go to get our code? Um, we supply all of our um, code in GitHub repos. So display it are the coordinate conversion, distance and direction, and visibility analysis widget repositories on GitHub. You'll use these repos to access and manage code. Next, Kevin will demonstrate how to deploy a web application with widgets to IIS. Kevin? All right, thanks, Patrick. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the solutions web app builder repo. As you can see, we have 15 widgets readily available for you to download. Plug into your instance of Web App Builder to Developer Edition. When you either download or clone this repo, you'll get all these widgets. And we also have a backlog item to separate these widgets into its own repo. So uh, we're definitely going to dig in more into that later on into our de development effort. So uh, the one thing I want to kind of highlight here is the clone or download. And I'm sure a lot of most most of the folks on this webinar understand cloning a repo or uh, getting a zip file from it. So but when you click on the open and desktop button, it will direct you to a GitHub GitHub for Windows application that will allow you to clone this particular repo. So but when you hover over the download zip button, you also have the option of downloading it as a zip file format. Both cloning or getting the zip file still allows you to get started on hacking away at these widgets. If you choose to share your work back to the repo, I, I strongly suggest cloning the repo. So this is GitHub for Windows. As you can kind of see, I have a list of repos cloned in the right-hand side of this application. Some private with the lock and some enterprises over here. And mostly, I have, uh, I'm contributing to public repos. I chose GitHub for Windows to manage my repos since it's, it's pretty easy and intuitive to use. Now, I usually use Git Bash window to do my commits and pushes. So, you know, I, I know some others, uh, you can really work through the GitHub for Windows, because it's pretty intuitive and whatnot, but I'm still somewhat old school in terms of command line uh, prompts and, and whatnot. So, and now I'm not going to go step through the process of getting a zip or cloning the repo, since it may take some time, given the uh, number of widgets in this repo. But I will talk about deploying the widgets in Web App Builder Dev Edition. Uh, I will use the corner conversion widget as an example, so I have already cloned that repo. So now, once I've cloned that repo, this on my right-hand side of this is my Windows Explorer pointing to my Git location. So you can kind of see the widgets that I've downloaded are all here. And to deploy the coordinate conversion widget, so I'm simply going to highlight the coordinate conversion. I simply copy the widget into the stem app folder of your of my web app application builder location. The military tools widgets need to be in the stem app widgets folder instead of the stem app 3D. 
since these widgets were created using the 3x JS API. We are currently converting the widgets over to utilize the 4x JS API. It's uh, somewhat of a slow process given the 4x API is still an evolving product. So next, I want to show you the Web App Builder. I only have an instance of Web App Builder running. But before we're moving on with creating a new app, I want to quickly share two ways of launching Web App Builder. You can start by double-clicking on a start.batch file located where you install Web App Builder. And the second is the, is to tie that Web App Builder dev edition to a Windows service. Now, this help page will step you through how to create a Windows service so you don't have to double-click on that start.batch file. With detailed instructions, you can really set up with, with or without a proxy. Now, back to Web App Builder. Let's go and create a new app. I'm going to use the default 2D template. Click Next. Simply provide a, a title. Click OK. At this point, a new web app will be created using the 2D configuration along with a unique ID. As you can see, ID of 11. Now I'm running Web App Builder Dev Edition 2.3, so hence it's 11. So I've only created 11 um, apps so far. But next, we will add the coordinate conversion widgets. Now I'm not going to step through the themes, maps, and attributes, and whatnot. So, because I really wanted to show you how to go about adding these widgets. So, now that I've copied my coordinate conversion widget over to the stem app folder within my web app dev instance, I can either add it to my header controller. As you see, when I hover over that header controller, it immediately highlights it in red on your map. Or you can click down here, some of our panels here, and you can choose either one of these locations to add the coordinate conversion widget to. So I'm simply going to click on one to add my coordinate conversion widget. Click on that, click OK. And it brings me to this configuration page, allowing me to set my location symbol, my zoom scale whenever I click a new point on the map, and a list of coordinate notations available to me. I'm going to leave everything as default. Click OK. And as you can see, now it's available for me. Uh, I'm going to click on that. Start clicking away. And as you can see, it works. Now I'm going to save that. And the last thing I want to show is just the, the launch. Generally, a lot of people want to go back to the main uh, page of Web App Builder. But before doing that, I would strongly suggest that you Go ahead and launch your application just to see if it actually works in the proper manner. So at this point, it looks like I can zoom in, zoom out, click on my coordinate conversion widget, and all the input coordinates have been are being converted nicely for you. Now I'm going to go back, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go back to my Web App Builder main page. And I want to kind of download this. So the next step would be to deploy this to a web server. So I have IS7 uh, on my machine, so I generally want to just download this in a zip file. So by clicking this, Web App Builder Dev Edition will wrap all the JavaScript files, HTML, along with the CSS files into a zip file, allowing you to then deploy it to your web server. Uh, now, I'm not going to step through that process due to time constraints, but what I want to show you now is that once I've deployed it, and as you can see, this is a standalone app that I created, uh, which is deployed on IIS. And I can launch my corner conversion widget and start clicking away. So the process of getting the military widgets from GitHub repo and added to a web app is relatively simple. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Patrick. Thanks, Kevin. Um, now I'd like to talk a little bit about the process we use to manage, test, and QC code here at Esri. We use Agile development to write our code, Scrum. Um, code can be developed in any um, number of IDEs. Our developers use Visual Studio, Sublime Text, and Notepad++, among others. 
We use GitHub for source control and management of code. And then we assure quality through unit and holistic tests. Lastly, all of our builds and deployments are managed using Jenkins, an open source automation server. So next, um, Kevin's going to talk about structuring your code to better fit within a testing framework. Kevin? Thanks, Patrick. So I'm going to briefly touch upon the framework used to create these widgets. As you can see in this high-level UML diagram of the distance and direction widget. Also note that we loosely base our development efforts on using MVC. Uh, it's the model view controller. These widgets also relies on other REST endpoints to, on a high level, retrieve and, and generally process data. Now, for example, the visibility widget that Patrick demoed, I'll talk more in our last demo, which really relies heavily on GP services to create view shed. So the loosely based MVC approach uh, really allowed us to separate the underlying business components from the presentation layers. Uh, this kind of in turn made for easy creation of unit testing and embedding these widgets into standalone apps outside of the Web App Builder framework. Now, this, as for unit tests, this, what you see is a simplified unit test executed in intern on the visibility widget. Notice intern offers a, a relatively clean and concise page displaying tests that were executed along with execution times. Uh, one thing to note about this, our development path was not overly smooth. I, Hate to admit that, but Patrick briefly mentioned we use Scrum along with two-week sprints. Uh, new features were coded without a thought of including unit tests, but we spent an entire sprint to add unit tests. Intern was used since our core JavaScript API and Web App Builder development teams used it for continuous integration. Now, uh, unit tests are embedded in each of the military tools. Now. The coordinate conversion tests are, I'm going to briefly show you the coordinate conversion tests. Now, I'm not going to show it to you in intern because I hate to admit that it's, it's roughly in a, you know, somewhere around 6 million unit tests that we were able to generate. And it takes roughly anywhere between 8 to 10 minutes to execute the entire suite of tests. So the intern integration with a continuous, uh, the intern, with using intern, it integrates well into our Jenkins uh, continuous integration build, sir. We have a build that executes four times daily. Uh, we decided to do that instead of kicking off a build upon a merge into a solutions widgets repo. Uh, the solutions widgets repo has several contributors from other groups, so it will be somewhat of a challenge to to proceed on that route. Uh, once we split the widgets out into its separate repo, build building, kicking off a build upon merge, merging of a PR will be our next step. Now, lastly, I want to briefly discuss the approach we took during the development of these widgets. Uh, we tried to de decouple our widgets from Web App Builder framework as much as possible. So we can reuse these digits in other applications. So the next thing I want to show is the standalone app that, that I made. Now this, this is a relatively simple app with a map on the left hand side and a line tab from the distance and direction page. There isn't a hint of Web App Builder in the code, which allowed us to embed the line digit into the app. I strongly suggest going that route when creating widgets to all the developers in this webinar. You may never know when you would want to reuse your digit, albeit in a new widget or a standalone app. So now that this is a simple app with the line digit embedded within it, I can still use the digit itself and it gives me the same behavior that you get from the distance and direction widget from Web App, Build, Web App Builder. 
So at this point, I'll turn it back over to Patrick. Thanks, Kevin. Um, we just saw how to structure code this, so that you can easily write tests to assure quality. But it's important to note that when testing, an appropriate testing framework must be chosen. We selected intern because it is free of charge and the ease of setting up the test environment. Next, Kevin will, demonst will demonstrate some tips and tricks for widget development. He will dive into debugging in both edit mode and inside a, de inside a deployed app. Then he will show how to load a jQuery library to use jQuery widgets. Kevin? All right, thanks, Patrick. Okay, I want to quickly talk about what we learned during our development process of these uh, military widgets. Uh, I'm hoping you may find some tips and tricks beneficial for your development effort. Uh, a lot of these tips have been covered at Dev Summit this year, and in the past I'll show them to you since these tips were used quite heavily during our widget development. So first I want to show you debugging Web App Builder in the configuration mode in a, and also in a deployed application. So we have, um, I have here a running version of an instance of Web App Builder. I'm going to bring up the Military Tools Widgets app that I just created by clicking on the configuration uh, button. Now I'm going to simply click on the, to launch DevTools, I simply click on this vertical ellipse button go to More Tools and bring up the Developer Tools for Chrome. Now, alternatively, uh, if you're more of a keyboard-centric developer, the hotkeys are for Windows is Control-Shift-I. Now, I'm going to launch the coordinate conversion widget. And as you can see in the, let's stretch it up here a bit. As you can kind of see, there are several items here in the table of contents within the DevTools. And, but I want to pay particular attention to this preview con config frame item as, as you can kind of see, as you hover over it, the map in the config, the map itself in configuration mode of Web App Builder highlights in blue. Since Web App Builder is shipped with no JS, all the JS, CSS, and HTML files are hosted through, through Node. This kind of eliminates the need to deploy Web App Builder to your web server since there's a default web server shipped with it. So drill down in the preview itself. We're going to bring up the corner conversion widget. So it's kind of several layers deep down, but you can kind of see I finally got to my widget.js, uh, the main entry point to my corner conversion widget. I'll go ahead and close. So now that you understand that this preview config frame really targets the uh, the actual web app, web application in configuration mode, and also there are other some uh, other items in here that kind of show kind of lets you understand uh, lets you know that there are CSS and HTML files that are also loaded into it, but you really want to start debugging within the configuration mode of Web App Builder. This is preview config frame, which points to the index of HTML is your entry point into that. So now I'm going to go over to my deployed app that I briefly brought up uh, in my first demo. Actually, I'm sorry, in my second demo. So now there's no hint of Web App Builder here, but if I bring up the Dev Tools, first thing you notice is that there isn't a any preview config frame at all. So that indicates that first off, it's being deployed to a web server, and since this web app is deployed through IS, um, there isn't any hint of preview config frame uh, item within the TOC of Dev Tools. So um, the reason why I kind of uh, bring this up is that I've noticed that um, quite a lot of times I've encountered developers hacking away at widgets in the configuration mode of Web App Builder. Generally, our recommendation is to code away in a deployed app, uh, and then test your widget in configuration mode of Web App Builder. Now, as we all know that uh, the widget also has a configuration page. So when you do create a configuration page for your widget, there isn't really a way, any way around it, but you're kind of 
um, kind of locked into a hacking away in the config mode in Web App Builder. Now, the next thing I want to share is breakpoints. You know, breakpoints are simple enough in DevTools, right? So you simply, I'm going to bring up uh, index.html. It's there, and distance direction, let's say, I'm going to bring that up here. And I'm simply going to just select a line. Right, so like right here. So simple breakpoints in DevTools, a lot of times we simply set breakpoints and start debugging away. Now that's great for general debugging, but it can be somewhat tedious. So the one thing that we relied heavily upon is conditional breakpoints. So right click against that breakpoint and you go to edit breakpoint. This is where you can actually supply a condition. So if that condition isn't met, that breakpoint will not activate. So once you set that condition to your breakpoint, refresh your app, the breakpoint is now active, but with a condition. So if that condition is not met, then it'll just be, that breakpoint will not be activated. So um, the next thing I want to show you is, that may, that may be somewhat helpful for you, is um, snippets. So a lot of times, A lot of times when you're in debugging mode of your, uh, when you start coding away, you generally show you're in the console of Chrome and you start typing away of some for loops and whatnot, right? But the one thing that I really want to show you here is the actual snippets where you can actually start creating functions within it. So when you hit a breakpoint, you can start coding away within this. It'll give you the the idea of what um, you'll have all the variables that are hydrated. Apply your function there. You can run those functions against those variables. And then you simply click Control Enter, and then away you go. So that kind of beats the idea of shown of coding within the console drawer here. So I highly recommend doing the uh, code snippets within the Chrome DevTools. The next thing I want to sh uh, show is the code itself, right? So uh, coding, when you're hacking away, you generally just get into a groove and you start hacking away. Now, a lot of times we generally encourage our developers to use a hint file or a, a, a lint file. Uh, and generally, Web App Builder comes along with a hint file that you can include into your IDE. Since I use Sublime Text, I had to download a hint package to so I can use that hint file. Now, I've configured it whereupon saving it, any changes I've made, I saved it, the hint, the hinter will then be executed. So I'm going to simply show, this is Sublime Text, and I can initiate my either JS hint or JS lint, right? And you can kind of see there's quite a lot of of suggestions and so not necessarily errors here at this point, right? And then lastly, you can also, I can, I've configured it whereupon saving it, it launches the hint or a lint. Now, one more thing I want to touch upon is the, um, how do you go about loading third-party libraries into your widget? Now, Patrick uh, briefly touched upon the visibility widget, demoing it, creating a view shed and whatnot. He showed the, um, some of the components where you can create a, a, an expanded field of view using that knob. Now, that, that component is called a knob that we've uh, used from jQuery itself. Uh, it used the, the visibility widget uses jQuery um, and Web Builder has a loader plugin allowing you to load a minified version of jQuery. So this is the one thing that I really want to highlight here is the jQuery loader that's available within Web App Builder. And I supply my minified version of jQuery into it. So this allows me to, to, load, to load 
jQuery libraries and components uh, if you really want to infuse that into your widget. At this point, I'll turn it over to Patrick. Thank you, Kevin. So, so that was military tools um, and some widget, some widget development for you. But where do we go from here? Um, military tools 1.0 was released in January of 2017. Moving forward, we plan to support batch coordinate conversion, increase notation support, and improve dark theme experience. Additionally, we plan to add the gridded reference graphic or GRG widget and grid overlay widgets moving into the next year. So please don't miss any of our webinar series. Um, just a note, past webinars have been recorded, so if you missed anything, um, you can still uh, go to the website and see it. Um, and the next scheduled webinar is Distance and Direction for Analysis on May 16th, 2017. If you want to learn more about um, ArcGIS Solutions and um, what we do here, um, go to the solutions.arcgis.com um, site. This is where you will find all of our maps, apps, um, custom configurations, all of our solutions, um, everything that um, you'll need to fit your needs. And with that, um, we go to questions. Thank you, Patrick and Kevin. Um, we're going to answer some questions. Let's see, we, are, we have uh, one here for, I suspect for the first widget there, can you change to miles from kilometers? Um, yes, uh, the default is kilometers, but um, you can um, set it to miles. And let's see here, and, uh, oh, one that's related right below this, support nautical model units, and can additional coordinate systems be added to the code easily? Um, yes, we support nautical miles um, um, on distance and direction and such, but uh, um, you will not be able to add. Um, we, we support the out-of-the-box um, coordinates, um, coordinate notations that uh, are supported by core. Is the web app builder compatible with Angular 4? I think that's a Kevin question. And is it possible to load as part of an Angular app and interact between Angular and the web app? There you go, Kevin. <laughs> Great question. Uh, you can there. You can create an Angular app with uh, bindings back to our JavaScript API, not necessarily to our web app builder. So, um, to answer your question, no, not within web app builder, but to our JS API, yes. And there are some repos that you can uh, that are available in GitHub that actually uh, tie Angular with our API. I'm going to go down to our next question. It says here, how to display 3D content and 2D content in the same map like Swipe? Generally, you would want to use a, uh, you would, I don't think the Swipe widget um, offers the capability of going from 2D to 3D, but if you do create an application in 3D and you start zooming into your uh, into the lower levels of the zoom levels, then you can kind of almost get to a 2D aspect. But you can never get a true um, idea of swiping between 2 and 3D. I hope that makes sense. All right, and then we have another question. Uh, from uh, Ranjit as well, um, how to convert a 2D, I guess, map widget to 3D widgets? Well, with the 3D widgets, you've got the idea of a, a map view and a scene view. So um, it's, I believe there is a, a blog out there to kind of get you started on converting some of the 2D widgets if you've created over to 3D. Um, I don't have that blog URL available right now, but it'll be, uh, I'm sure we can make it part as a, uh, when we make this video available. Okay, next question. Do you support different datum formats in the coordinate conversion tools, such as AINA and AIN? B W G E. <laughs> um, I'll 
I guess I'll take that one. Um, no, we don't, at this time we don't support um, other coordinates. So it's really um, coordinate notations, and all of, the, all of the coordinate notations are WGS84. Um, so we support uh, um, things such as uh, uh, lat long um, and WGS84, MGRS, UTM, um, among a few others. I, I don't have a full list right um, handy right here. Uh, I have one here. It says here, and, and I'll, I'll answer this one here. Difference between Lidos, Geo Rover, and your add-on. Well, right now we don't have a comparison to that. So maybe if you if you want to go out and take a look at it and give us some feedback, that'd be great. Uh, that came from Mario Acevedo. Uh, next question: Can I modify an existing widget? Yes, you can, um, assuming that if you download any widgets from any repo that is uh, web app builder centric, then yes, you can. Because uh, our widgets are uh, free for you to download, to inject into your own web app builder, and also for you to manipulate. And if you do choose to contribute back to our repos, we're more than glad to have, uh, incorporate that changes back into it. Okay, I have another question here. Um, should we start developing widgets using uh, 4.x JavaScript API? That's a good question. Um, you can definitely dive into the widget development uh, using 4.x, but please kind of keep in mind that it's still an evolving API. Not all digits are available in 4.x as they are in 3.x, but but that, that shouldn't stop you from creating these widgets and using the 4x API. Okay. Next question. Will the military tools widgets be part of the core widgets for Web App Builder? Yes, the Defense Solutions team is uh, aggressively trying to get that core conversion widget into the core offering. Uh, we are also trying to get the grid overlay widget, also better known as the MGRS widget, into core as well. Um, I guess the target time frame is around July, just in time for UC. Uh, and then I have a couple more questions. I'm going to go with this one here. Can we write Web App Builder widgets with TypeScript? Oh, another great question. Um, Let's see, our uh, Forex JS API is written entirely in TypeScript. And there are boilerplate template apps currently being written to support that. The, um, I believe the JS API dev team also provided definition or interface files for 3x API so developers can write standalone apps using a 3x API. Now, as for Web App Builder, if you look at the latest version of Web App Builder Dev Edition 2.3, there are some interface and definition files in the stem app folder that's a, um, that really supports the 3x. The Web App Builder dev team is, uh, I believe, slowly converting some widgets and digits over to TypeScript. So in theory, you can write widgets for Web App Builder using 3x API, but you will need the uh, definition interface files for 3x, and that's available on GitHub as well. Okay, looks like I have one more question here. Uh, location of the previous webinar recordings. That, that will be sent out in the email, but where you went to register for the, uh, the webinar, that's another location for it. But the actual will be there on uh, the, the email that's being sent out. Okay, let's see. We have another one here. Uh, why 2D widgets uses 3.2 and 3D uses 4.3 version of ArcGIS for JavaScript API? Well, right off the bat, the the three the 3D widgets that support 3D need to utilize the 4x API because the 4x API offers all the 3D functions. The 3x obviously does not offer that um, the 3D functions at all. 
So if you're in 3, 2D, if you want to create a widget using just, and you know that it's going to be in 2D, I strongly suggest the 3X because uh, the 3X API has a lot more functionality than the 4X currently has. Well, I want to thank everyone for attending. Our next webinar is May 16th at the same time, and it's going to be covering the distance and direction tool as part of military tools for ArcGIS. Thank you for attending, and we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Thank you.